Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The impeachment trial of President Trump resumes today with the final day of opening statements from Democrats. I'm Elizabeth Herr on Capitol Hill, and I'll have the full story coming up. Bit of a chill in the air, which uh, essentially dry out there for the most part. We'll look ahead to your weekend forecast in just a moment. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It's January 24th. Yay. Welcome to your Friday, everybody. We made it. We did make it. The week went fairly quickly, fairly painlessly, but uh, hopefully you got some good rest last night. And this morning we're waking up. It looks like the temperature is uh, hovering in the mid 40s. Is it going to be another pretty day like yesterday? It's going to be gorgeous, just like yesterday. Good. Yeah, it turned out even quicker than what I expected when the, the skies cleared out and oh, it was so, so nice. beautiful. It was really a pretty day. Yeah, it was gorgeous. And like I said, today's going to be the same. Now this morning we are down around. It is chilly out there, but uh, we're down close to a normal low temperature. If you are heading out to the cowboy breakfast this morning, just bundle up. I'm not going to have to worry about any rain, sleet, anything like that, like we have in years past. 44 in town, 42 at Randolph and some 30s in portions of the hill country. There is a little bit of a wind chill out there. Not much, but just enough of a breeze to add that little nip to some of those temperatures. So it feels like 41 in uh, Castroville and 38 is windchill right now up the road in Balverde as well as in New Braunfels and allergens. Mold yesterday was extremely high. It should continue to drop down just given the fact we do have some drier air in here and that's going to be the case today. Tomorrow a little bit in a different situation. Anyway, as far as today though is concerned, we are going to have uh, temperatures staying in the low 40s, mid 30s in the hill country. A little bit of a light breeze out there. Just a gorgeous sun rise again this morning and a beautiful day upper 60s a little above normal wonderful tomorrow mm, a little bit of a fly in the ointment and then sunday is going to be another fantastic day we'll talk about tomorrow and take a look at the rest of the weekend in just a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now here is officer nick solis good morning sir good morning mike good morning everyone hope everyone is having a great friday morning well we already got some accidents out there so let's get to it first one here's a three vehicle accident on westbound 90 at south general mcmullen this one just came out looks like sapd is responding according to reports it is in a bad spot so be careful if you're going westbound especially it is you know not daylight yet so be very careful use caution when approaching this intersection here there's three vehicles on the roadway it could be dangerous uh, let's take this accident this one's been there out for about 30 minutes now roosevelt avenue at hansford street uh, sapd is on scene it should be cleared here any uh, minute. Taking a look outside at the Trans Guide, uh, US 90 General Mullen. That's looking right there. That's where the accident is. We can't find it yet, but it's supposed to be right there. 37 at Jones Avenue, light traffic. And let's do one more here. Uh, 35, oh, 16 of Warren Wiseman. Pretty good. So I'll keep you updated on those accidents, and I hope everyone has a great morning. Mark? You as well. Thank you, Nick. And your morning headlines is the final day of opening statements for Democrats in the Senate impeachment trial. The House managers spent more than nine hours yesterday making their case that President Trump violated the Constitution. ABC's Elizabeth Herr is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Democrats preparing to wrap up their case, arguing for removing President Trump from office. This conduct is not America first. It is Donald Trump first. The House managers accusing the president of abusing his power and obstructing Congress, alleging the president only started pushing Ukraine to launch investigations against Joe Biden when polls started showing the former VP as his biggest threat. No president has ever used his office to compel a foreign nation to help him cheat in our elections and the actions of the president do not reach that level, no matter which school of thought you're on. The president's lawyers maintaining abuse of power is not a crime and therefore not an impeachable offense. Democrats countering that argument by playing this old video of one of the president's top allies, Senator Lindsey Graham, from the Clinton impeachment trial. It doesn't even have to be a crime. It's just when you start using your office and you're acting in a way that hurts people. You've committed a high crime. All 100 senators required to sit through these marathon sessions doing what they can to stay alert. Some using fidget spinners and stress balls, others even sketching. And lead House Prosecutor Adam Schiff closing this day with this, this impassioned plea for the Senate. If you find him guilty, you must find that he should be removed because right matters. Because right matters. And the truth matters. 
And tomorrow, the president's lawyers take over, and sources say they are concerned their arguments may get buried on a Saturday, so they could go for a shorter session tomorrow and leave the bulk of their arguments for next week. Elizabeth Hur, ABC News, Capitol Hill. This morning, we're learning more details on the aerial tanker that crashed in Australia, killing three Americans. Investigators say the C-130 crashed just after dropping a load of fire retardant on a wildfire crews were trying to contain. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau says specialists were sent to the crash site to recover the victims' bodies. We learned the firefighters were from Montana, Arizona, and Florida. Shanghai Disneyland and Disney Town apparently closed as a precaution to, uh, because of the coronavirus. It continues to be a major concern in China, and several cities are under a travel ban. The resort issued a return policy for all visitors who have pre-booked and want to cancel or reschedule their trip. The park was preparing for the Lunar Year celebration. Back here at home, it's known to many as the unofficial kickoff to the rodeo. Right now, thousands of people are headed towards Cowboys Dance Off for the 42nd Annual Cowboy Breakfast. We'll be there live all morning with team coverage. First up, let's check in with our Sarah Acosta. She's ready. She's got on her cowboy hat and her boots. And I understand this is your first cowboy breakfast experience. It is my first, Leslie, and I'm really excited to be here. We're, we found the best spot right now. This is the fire. These are the coals that make this breakfast happen. I'm here with Charlie, and Charlie, you said you guys lit this at midnight, and how many coals do you go through? Oh, five, 600 pounds at least of coals. We've had a pallet full of bags here that we go through. And if it wasn't for this fire, the breakfast? Nope, wouldn't be happening. These guys have an the the important job. Why don't you give us some light there? There we go, woo! I like that fire. It is super warm, but we're going to go into where actually all that magic happens from those coals. This is the breakfast tent behind the scenes because people have already lined up. There are so many people already in line. I want to go to the coffee station this morning. Good morning, guys. Oh, do you have a cup of coffee for me? He's getting me a cup of coffee. How sweet of him. Okay, so you guys are out here volunteering. You've been doing this for three years, three years now. And how much coffee are you preparing this so morning? We're brewing, uh, right now we have 200 gallons of coffee ready to go, and that's going to disappear in a flash. The lines already started flowing in. So we're, we're getting pre prepared to brew probably about another 200 gallons more and go through about 300 pounds of coffee. That is a lot of coffee. Let me, let me coffee. taste it here. We got a lot of good help, too. You know, this didn't have cream or sugar in it, and it doesn't need it. Thank it you. is delicious, and it's waking me up this morning. Oh, Azian, let's head over here. Okay, these are the biscuits, guys. And we're just getting started, too. Good morning, guys. They're making about 5,000 biscuits this morning. And can, can you guys open the oven for us so we can see those biscuits? Oh, there's not any in there right now. They're putting them in for us. How sweet of them. Well. Guys, we're going to be here all morning long. We're also live streaming on KSAT.com. Our Alicia Barrera is out here. 42 years, the world's largest cook breakfast happening right now in San Antonio, 830. Keep it here with us. Mark and Leslie. Sarah Costa live at Cowboys, Cowboy Breakfast, rather. We'll be checking in with our crews all morning it's long. It's our initiation day. Mm -hmm. Can you smell the coffee and biscuits now? No. 438, 44 <laughs> degrees. Still to come, pop star Demi Lovato gives a candid interview days before her debut at the Grammys. That's coming up in your GMA First Look. Political candidates are inundating Iowans with political ads in hopes of getting their support just in time for the caucus, which is right around the corner. We have more coming up. And live cam giving us a peek outside. We are in for another beautiful day today. Chris, air and clear skies. We'll be back. 441, welcome back. A little more than a week to the Iowa caucuses, and people there are being bombarded, as you can imagine, by political ads. This comes as presidential candidates try to increase the turnout and win their support. Seen as Nadia Romero has more. President Trump and I are counting on you to be there on caucus night. From caucusing lessons. We're going to tell you everything you need to know to participate in the Iowa caucus and help Amy win. To campaign pitches. Iowa, soon the election will be in your hands. Iowans are being inundated with ads. Bringing a lot more opportunity, not only back to Iowa, but back to the United States. 
According to the most recent poll, there's a horse race for the top spot at the caucuses, but only 43% of likely Iowa caucus goers are firm in their picks, Amy, meaning there's still time for candidates to change minds. Amy has determination and grit. She's not afraid to take on the big issues. To move the needle, Democratic White House hopefuls poured major money into Iowa. Tom is good for Iowa because, like so many of us, he understands the importance of climate change. Tom Steyer is the biggest spender, followed by Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg. With so much on the line, I'm asking you to join me to help turn the page on our politics. The political ad blitz will be done by early February. Until then... Iowans should brace for more commercials as candidates attempt to convince people to show up and support their campaigns come caucus night. I'm Andrew Yang and I approve this message and ask for your support on February 3rd to fight for the future our families deserve. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero reporting. Here are time now it's 443 and 44 degrees. After the break, a very personal one-on-one -on -one with singer Demi Lovato. She's talking Grammys and what they mean to her on a personal level. That's next in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, pop star Demi Lovato is speaking out about the heartfelt song she plans to sing at the Grammy Awards this Sunday as she makes her big return to the stage. In a new interview on Apple Music's New Music Daily with Zane Lowe, the pop star says the heartfelt song was written during a critical period in her life. So this song was written and recorded actually uh, very shortly before everything happened. In July of 2018, the star was treated for an overdose and several subsequent medical complications. Lovato says that she has a new understanding of what the song meant to her then and what it means now. I recorded it, went through everything, and then it made sense later of like, okay, that's why these lyrics were so emotional when I was singing it. And coming up at 7 a.m., we have even more from Demi's candid interview. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, New York. More than 30,000 people expected to chow down on lots of free food at Cowboy Breakfast this morning. Our Alicia Barrera live at the front of the line with the brave souls who woke up early for a warm San Antonio staple, yummy breakfast tacos. Hey, Alicia. Good morning. Yes, very brave. You know, last year when we were here, it was, I think, a little bit colder. So today it's not too bad, but still waking up at 3, 2 a.m. to be here. And then already they're getting served the breakfast tacos. One of the volunteers, we have Erica here. She's been up early. Erica, about how many tacos have you already given out this morning? Oh, man, I lost count. Like hundreds, if not close to a thousand by now. And which ones are you preparing? Potato and egg. Potato and egg tacos. One of the best. Is that your favorite? Not mine, but I like it. It's good. <laughs> Especially when it's free, right? Right. <laughs> All right. And so these are the people. Thank you so much, Erica. These are some of the people that are um, have been in line this morning to get their tacos. Um, so good. Over here, we have Rudy's Barbecue that they're handing out. So, so good. Later on this morning, we're going to make it over there to the line, try to squeeze our way through. But just look how excited people are to get their, their breakfast tacos this morning for Cowboy Breakfast. And of course, this means that rodeo. Rodeo season is right around the corner. Mark and Leslie, I have my cowboy hat, cowboy boots ready this morning. Do you have yours already sitting next to your bed, ready for rodeo season? I've got several of them in my closet. I'm ready. Got to break in a couple pairs of Wranglers, but we're ready, Alicia Beretta. All right. Stay tuned, you guys. I'll be back <laughs> later on this morning. This morning. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks, Alicia. Yeah. We got to get um, Sarah on the the mechanical bull at some point this morning. That's also a rite of passage. Uh, it definitely is, and uh, many of us would pay good money to see that. Yes, we would. 448 right now. How are the roadways looking on this Friday morning, Nick? Well, Leslie, if you, are, if you are on your way to the Cowboy Breakfast right now, things are looking good for you even on 35 and on 410, so that's good. We still work on this accident, though, on U.S. Highway 90. Now, I did see reports that this accident is actually on the westbound access road as you're coming from General McMullen on to uh, US Highway 90 West. It's a three car accident. It looks like the tow truck is on the way, but if you are heading this way, expect a little bit of a delay. Don't think right now at this time it's gonna cost too much, but just uh, be, be on the lookout for it. Here's some drive times. If you're on 1604 westbound from US 281 to I-10, six minutes. And if you're on southbound 281 from uh, Boulevard to 1604, five minutes. So very good commute times there. Let's take a look outside at the Trans Guide now. We have uh, I-10 and Hilton. I was looking good. Uh, 410 in Jackson, Keller looking great. 
Uh, 410 in the New Braunfels Avenue, light, light traffic. And US 90 at General McMullen there, the accident is supposed to be somewhere in that area. Not really affecting traffic, though, so that's always good news. That is looking good there. Sorry about that. Frozen iguana is hitting the ground over here. <laughs> is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, you know, they're cold stunned. Or you just don't do it. They'll wake up. I thought it was a thermos full of coffee. Nah. No? I've okay. done that before in the set. Yeah, it, it, it happens. If you are waking up very early to go to Cowboy Breakfast, yes, like Alicia said, it's maybe not quite as cold as last year, but, uh, you know, in years past, there's been rain, there's been sleet, there's been... 27 degrees. Oh, yeah, why is it when we so. used to have to go out there, it was like when our <laughs> parents walked to school in the wintertime. Right. You know? And they get this beautiful weather. Yeah. It's gorgeous, though, and this is what the sunrise is going to be looking like uh, later on. Yesterday was beautiful with the uh, sun coming up, and yeah, today is going to be every bit as nice. We're starting off in the uh, 40s. Clear skies, no problems out there. Uh, starting off in the 40s here in town. Normal low temperatures, 41. And we'll drop down maybe another couple of degrees in the next few hours. 36 in comfort. 40 Hondo right now, 45 up the road in Canyon Lake. Little bit of a wind chill, though. There's just enough of a, a breeze out there to shave off a couple of notches as far as temperatures are concerned, but no big deal. We uh, obviously have some dry air down here at the surface and fairly dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. A little bit of this moisture right there, so perhaps a milky shade to the sky, but kind of split in here. So it's going to be absolutely beautiful out there. And as far as the humidity, it's going to be staying low overnight and starting off the day tomorrow. These dew points will be staying in the 30s, maybe low 40s. But then as the day progresses tomorrow, humidity is really going to start to come back in here. That's going to help out with the cloud cover, and that's also going to feed a couple of showers around here. There's a disturbance which is going to be sliding basically up along the coast and we start off with some clear skies. Here come the clouds moving on in here. Now this computer model is not really overly aggressive as far as rain is concerned. A uh, couple of showers, mainly off to the east, and this would be late tomorrow night into early, early Sunday morning, and then things are going to be clearing out. Different computer model, clear skies today, and then the clouds move on in here. This one, here you can see the disturbance there along the coast, has a few more of these showers a little further inland. Now, this is also kind of broad brush as well, but this would be late tomorrow, and then into the evening hours and wee hours of Sunday morning, although... That may be overstating things a little bit. Then we clear out fantastic on Sunday as well as Monday. Then we have another shot at some rain coming in here on Tuesday. And then in behind that, we have yet another shot of rain. Now, we're not talking about huge rain events, but at least we're going to have a few showers then again on Thursday. So we're looking at almost every other day tomorrow late and then again Tuesday, then Thursday for some rain chances. And in between beautiful weather 63 today at noon. Absolutely gorgeous. It's going to warm up fairly quickly. We gain about um, 20 degrees between now and noon and then 68 for a high temperature today. Beautiful. It's going to be pretty chilly tonight and skies are going to be clear. So we're going to cool off fairly quickly once the sun goes down and then make it down to a 43 tomorrow morning. Chance for a couple of showers late. We start off with more clear skies. Sunrise should be OK, I think, tomorrow and then clouds throughout the day. A couple of showers uh, maybe late in the day, especially down along the coast and then tomorrow evening. Sunday looks beautiful. 70, 69 on Monday, a couple of showers Tuesday, a couple of showers on Thursday and Fairly tranquil temperatures, maybe at or a little bit above normal, a good chunk of next week. All right. Thanks, Mike. 453, 44 degrees. Our San Antonio Spurs hoping for another win tonight. After the break, we have a preview of the matchup. It's game day. We're getting ready to cheer on our Spurs tonight. They're taking on the Phoenix Suns. Tip-off set for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. If the Silver Black win tonight, it'll be the longest win streak of the season. Right now, the Spurs are 20-23 and 23 on the season, sitting in eighth in the Western Conference. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. It's 4.56 now, and it's 44 degrees outside. Motorola dropping its newest edition of the Razor phone. And get this, it's more expensive than an iPhone, where you can get your hands on one still ahead. Tinder adding a panic button for dates gone wrong. Details on that coming up on GMSA. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Dozens of cases of the flu have been reported at local elementary schools. Right now, GMSA, how maintenance crews are trying to keep flu from spreading. 
and taking a look outside with live cam. Welcome to your Friday, everybody. It is Cowboy Breakfast Day, and we've got some beautiful weather for the weekend, at least most of it. We'll check in with Mike. All right, good morning to you. It is Friday, January 24th. We're getting reports of breaking news out of the Houston area, reports of a massive explosion that has rattled windows for miles. It looks like it's probably a gas leak kind of explosion. We're trying to gather details and video, and of course, we'll update you as soon as we can. Let's go to Mike and an update on our Cowboy Breakfast forecast. Boy, you couldn't ask for better weather for the uh, Cowboy Breakfast. It is kind of chilly out there, but um, it's it's beautiful. We have clear skies. going to be a fantastic sunrise and gorgeous all day long. Probably every bit as pretty as what it was uh, yesterday. I'm going to just kind of jump ahead to another graphic. I was trying to get that little thing to pop up there. It's not working for me right now. Anyway, as far as temperatures uh, around the area, we are eh, close to freezing in parts of the hill country. We've got mid 30s out there uh, towards Comfort, Bernie, Bandera 38 degrees, 45 here in town, 42 in New Braunfels, and there's a little bit of a wind chill to deal with. Not much of a breeze. We don't. We had a slight wind chill last hour, but nothing as of right now. But just enough of kind of a puff of a breeze out there. Otherwise, it is fantastic. Clear skies, dry air, light wind. Mold is very, very high. That was yesterday's reading. Hopefully, with this dry air that's moved in here, it does tend to uh, go down. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out just after 7 o'clock this morning. Clear cold this morning, sunny, beautiful today. Upper 60s, fantastic. Just about every bit as pretty as what it was yesterday. Increasing clouds tomorrow. I think we'll start off with uh, more clear skies and then clouds going to move in fairly quickly. There's a very small chance for a couple of showers late in the day tomorrow and then tomorrow evening. That's going to get on out of here and Sunday looks fantastic. A couple of more rain chances down the road. Not big chances, but at least a couple more chances for rain. Details on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Elise. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great Friday morning. Uh, right now, we're working on one accident. That's actually on the access road of US Highway 90 and General McMullen Drive. It's right here. Uh, looks like SAPD is on scene, tow trucks on the scene. This one should be getting cleared pretty soon. Let's take a look at some drive times now. We have, if you're on eastbound 1604 from US Highway 281 to I-35, nine minutes. And if you're on 1604 westbound from I-35 to US 281, eight minutes. So good commute times there. Taking a look outside at the train. Oh, no, I have one more. Uh, 1604 eastbound in the Lotus area to Randolph, 26 minutes, and westbound 1604 from Randolph Air Force Base to the Lotus area, 28 more minutes. I don't know if I'm going to have another one. Oh, we got Trans Guide. 10 and Crossroads looking very good right now. Not much to see there. Light traffic is very light. 35 and Top Line, very good as well. And let's see here. Let's do another one. Let's go. 35 and Brooklyn is looking great. So I hope everyone has a uh, great Friday morning and eats a lot of tacos at that cowboy breakfast. Leslie? Thank you very much, Nick. More than 90 cases of the flu reported at two local elementary schools. Maintenance crews at Roan Forest and Encino Park elementaries are busy wiping down surfaces to keep the flu from spreading. Even though the peak of flu season might be coming to an end, parents still need to be on high alert. NEISD says maintenance crews are using misting machines to disinfect the campuses. The district says classes will continue as usual. Metro Health is also offering free flu shots. You can find out more information on our website, ksad.com. In your morning headlines, Democrats preparing to wrap up opening statements today in the Senate impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. The House managers accused the president of abusing power and obstructing Congress. They allege President Trump only started pushing Ukraine to launch investigations against Joe Biden when polls started showing the former VP as a big threat. President Trump's lawyers maintain abuse of power is not a crime and therefore not an impeachable offense. China has placed a lockdown on several cities in an effort to contain the deadly coronavirus that has spread to several countries and sickened hundreds of people. China's National Health Commission has confirmed more than 800 cases of the coronavirus with 25 total deaths. Now Texas health officials are investigating a suspected case in a college student in Brazos County. Texas A&M is confirming the student, a student of theirs may be infected after a trip to China. Controversial NFL free agent Antonio Brown has turned himself into police in Florida after refusing to pay for a delivery and apparently getting into a fight with the delivery driver at his home. An arrest warrant was out for Brown and now facing three criminal charges, including one count of burglary with battery. Brown is expected to have a bond hearing today. Back here at home, cowboy hats, boots are out. The cowboy breakfast is now officially in full swing. Thousands of people are lined up. They're waiting to get their hands on some delicious food. Sarah Costa is live at Cowboys Dance Hall, Northeast Side. How's it looking out there as a 504, Sarah? 
Good morning. Okay, I found one of my favorite stations. I've been having fun with these guys. This is the gravy station. We have, all right, yeah, dump the flour in there. This is Angie. She's got a very important job. How much flour are you guys using this morning to make this gravy? Oh my gosh. Uh, can't even tell you. We've got, how much are we doing, baby? All together, we'll make about, about, about 300 gallons of gravy today to feed everybody out in biscuits and gravy. And I love how Mike here is using an actual drill to do the mixing. You've been doing this for 10 years now, so you know what you're doing. Oh, yes. It, uh, before when we first started, we did it with a whisk. Uh, get home, and be, you'd be tired. So now we, uh, we use a, a drill to get it all going. Your arm would be real tired. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd be real tired all day. But uh, like I said, we'll serve about, we'll do about 300 gallons this morning, uh, biscuits and gravy. And uh, it's all our Pioneer brand. Pioneer is a big sponsor of the company. I feel like I'm in the splash zone here. No, 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 you're, you're good. You're good. You're not in the splash zone right now. It's not, a, it's not a crime if you get a little gravy on you. Just, you know, lick it off this morning. <laughs> well, thank you guys for supplying all the good stuff. I'm going to walk over here. We have some volunteers we want to talk to. Oh, here we go. We have volunteers with Jordan Ford. You guys are a big sponsor. I'm we, here with uh, Mark Cross. And why do you guys want to just come out here and participate every year? Well, I'll tell you what, Sarah. We're celebrating our 100th anniversary just a few months ago in jo at Jordan Ford. We've been the sponsor of this for 11 years. There's 30,000 people out here. We've got 60 of our employees out here. We want to give back to the community. It's fun. This is an iconic event with jo for San Antonio. It's like going to the Riverwalk, going to the Alamo. It's iconic. Do you have any advice for me? This is my first cowboy breakfast. This is your first. You look my like first. a professional already. Well, you know, this is your first. I'm a South Texas girl, so I can handle it. The only advice I would give you, you've already done. You came out here. And that's what I would tell your, your uh, viewers. If you've never done it, you need to come out here. It's iconic. You're a San Antonian. You have to be here. Absolutely. Well, thank you, guys. Have fun. Enjoy volunteering this morning and eat lots of tacos. Again, we're going to be out here all morning long. Our reporter, Alicia Bonetta, is also out here. We're also streaming live right now. We've got two cameras on KSAT.com. So just make sure you tune in and come on out. They're going to be going till. sorry, AZ, and there's a table behind you. We're going to, the breakfast is going to be going until 8.30 this morning. Mark and Leslie. Just don't let them fall into the to the gravy there, Sarah. <laughs> protect the, the gravy. gravy. <laughs> protect the gravy. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, tell Mark Cross we said hello. Thanks, Sarah. We'll check in with you guys a little bit later on. 507, 45 degrees. If you still have cable, expect your bill to go up. Comcast raising its rates after losing hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Details coming up in Tech Bites. Outside with live cam, it is the unofficial kickoff to San Antonio stock show and rodeo season here in the area. We'll get an update on your weekend forecast from Mike. Still a little chance of rain out there? He'll tell us. Right now it's about 10 minutes past the hour. Two words repeatedly woven throughout the funeral services for District Judge Ray Olivari was that he cared. He lost his battle with cancer last week, but was remembered as a dominant figure in the Bear County justice system for over three decades. Paul Venema was there as Olivari's family, friends, and judicial colleagues paid their final respects. A procession of judges, all wearing their judicial robes in his honor, paid final respects to District Judge Ray Olivari. The veteran jurist was midway through his term as 144th District Court Judge when he died. During his public service life, he served in many capacities, from probation officer to judge. He was always there for others, willing to be there. And his goal was how to truly help this person, to do justice. A judge remembered as a man who loved his family and truly cared for those with whom he dealt from the bench. Compassionate, but tough. He was tough when he needed to be. And, and if, if giving somebody a second chance came across as being not tough, well, he, he dealt with that. The funeral ended with Administrative District Judge Ron Rangel presenting the family with a state seal, noting that an element in the seal reflected Judge Olivari. There's an olive branch that represents peace. What more peace can you get than to come across an individual that's got compassion, love in his heart, and wants to make the world a better place? In addition to attending the funeral, the judges paid one final tribute to Judge Olivari. In his honor, all courthouse courtrooms went dark. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. Friday morning, 512, 45 degrees.
The original Razer phone was cool, but this new version may be even cooler. How to get your hands on the new foldable Razer phone still ahead. And a developer bringing back Tetris. What you need to know to play the game this time in your morning Tech Bites. Can your hair survive damage? Dove Intensive Repair Conditioner proves it can. We treat one brush with Dove Conditioner and expose both to heat styling, to bleaching, and even coloring. The difference is clear. The brush treated with Dove is visibly smoother and protected against damage. Dove Intensive Repair Conditioner for 100% touchably beautiful hair. Since one conditioner doesn't fit all, new Dove Ultra Care Conditioners. What's this? Your cold's gonna make you a zombie tomorrow. <laughs> Wrong. I'm taking a powerful nighttime cold medicine so I can sleep great and wake up human. Don't eat me! I taste terrible! Use the next night shift cold and flu. Fight your worst symptoms so you can sleep great and wake up human. So, you want to get creative with your oatmeal. First, you need whole grain Quaker oats and maybe a bit of tried and true. Then add some solid choice. Your perfect bowl is yours to create. Our oats, your creation. Quaker Oats. In today's Tech Bytes, Tender's new panic button. The dating app is adding a panic button that users can hit to alert police if something goes criminally wrong on their date. Another will allow daters to check in and tell friends where they are. The features will be part of a new section of Tender's app called the Safety Center. And get ready for your cable bill to go up, especially if you're a Comcast customer. The company is raising rates this year after losing nearly 150,000 subscribers in the last quarter. But Comcast added 400,000 internet subscribers as it prepares to launch its own streaming service. And Tetris fans can breathe a little easier. Days after EA announced it's shutting down its mobile game in April, a developer has released an official version for both Android and iOS. I was always waiting on that one piece, that long piece. Could it's the get best. It. I know. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Time to check in with Alicia Beretta live at Cowboy Breakfast right now. And Alicia, you're preparing some delicious food with your bare hands. Good morning. Yeah, look, I had to put gloves on for this one. So earlier I heard y'all say that the rite of passage, of course, is Cowboy Breakfast, but another rite of passage once you're here, because I've heard Justin did this a few years ago and then Mac just last year, you have to actually make it that So come over here with me. Lisa over here invited me this morning. We're going to be making, rolling some up. So the trick is you fold over the taco to one corner, flip it, flip it, the corners go in, you flip it twice or once more, you put it in here and there you have it and look at these ladies working quickly me not so fast and i'm actually going to be helping um, distribute some lisa how long have you been volunteering helping out here since 2008 and it's so special for you every year i love it i just like working with people yeah and then thousands of people come and yes. get these tacos uh-huh and what are y'all actually rolling up these are rudy's barbecue tacos they smell so good thank you so much we'll head over thank you we'll head over here to start handing out some some of these tacos over here i took the glove off but good morning good morning one taco one taco we have and this is what people are out here for good morning standing in line for these warm tacos and they really are super, super warm. So um, I'll let Sarah know, but I challenge her to, to make some tacos this morning. Back to you guys. Oh, that's a challenge. Yeah, and, you, and feel free to bring them back here to the station. Yeah, we'll be a part. I, you know, I will. I will, you guys. I'll sneak some in. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. I'll take two. You want one. Only one. Mike. Couple. Nick. Four. Nick. Four. Nick wants four. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is standing by with time saver traffic. Well, while well, you've had to eat a string cheese in the last 16 hours, those tacos look pretty good. So, <laughs> well, right now things are looking good outside. No accidents to report. So let's take a look at some drive times. If you're on 151 eastbound to 1604 to 90, it's nine minutes. And if you're on 90 eastbound to 1604 to I-35, 12 minutes. Very good commute times there. Here's uh, near the Cowboy Breakfast. This is Loop 410 and Austin Highway. There's a spotlight there at Cowboys Dance Hall. Uh, traffic very moderate for this time, obviously. I expect uh, traffic to be very backed up, 410 eastbound, probably all the way past I-10. So if you do go down 410 eastbound for work, leave a little bit earlier today. You might see a delay because of this breakfast, especially on 410 eastbound. Just uh, 
Just some advice there. 410 in Jackson Carroll looking good. 410 at Fredericksburg. Traffic is light. Uh, 410 at Bandera still looking good. And we have 10 in Frio inbounds and outbounds. Things are looking pretty good there. So uh, that's a good sign. No more accidents on the roadway. And I hope everyone is having a good Friday morning. Thank you, Nick. Uh, I understand, Mike, you guys had some alpacas on SA Live yeah. yesterday. We had a couple of well-behaved alpacas. Yeah, they, they, they were very well-behaved alpacas. And what was interesting is, because they're kind of the smaller cousin of llamas um, and a little easier to, to get along with, and they're huge animals, they weigh less than 200 pounds. Really? Because when they're... Did you pick one up? When they, no, 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 but when they're shaved down, <laughs> I mean, it's like they're this, they're this big around, yeah. shave them, and they're about yay big around because they have so much fur. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, the, the fur was like that deep on your hand, stick it in there. So sweet little animals, but okay. they're, up, they're available for parties. So, so uh, Wait, have an alpaca have, at your party. <laughs> people have used them in weddings to walk down the aisle with the flower girl, she said. Mm. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. they're multi-purpose. They are. Thank they're sweet little that. animals, yes. Okay. Anyway, there's your alpaca update for the day. So uh, take a look at this picture. All right, question, sunset or sunrise? That's a sunset. sunset. How do you know? I don't know. Don't we? Just a hunch. <laughs> <I'm guessing. laughs> you got a 50-50 chance. <laughs> Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture, Sandra. Uh, speaking of sunrises, it's going to be beautiful this morning. Looking off to the east there, obviously the camera's a little bit out of focus, but uh, just great weather, especially for the uh, Cowboy Breakfast. We don't have any problems out there at all this morning. Bernie's at 34, so in some of the outlying areas, it may be actually freezing or a little bit uh, below that. 41 Port SA, 42 up the road in New Braunfels. And there's a... Well, a little bit of a breeze in places. Not bad as far as any wind chill is concerned. Basically, uh, light to no wind at all to calm wind. Clear skies, dry air, that means radiational cooling. That's why we're down to about a normal low temperature this morning. Upstairs in the atmosphere, now you'd like to see just this totally dark shade on here. A slight bit of a grayish shade, which means a little bit of moisture aloft. Maybe not as vivid a blue skies as yesterday, but it's going to be kind of splitting hairs. It's going to be a gorgeous day today. There's no, no denying that. 43 in Hondo. 42. These are the dew point temperatures and they're going to remain fairly low going into the afternoon and going into this evening as well. But then notice throughout the day tomorrow, the humidity, the dew points are really going to start to come up. That's going to feed clouds. That's going to feed a chance, very small chance for a couple of showers around here. Two different computer models. Uh, this one clear skies throughout the day today and then tomorrow clouds start to move in in the morning. They will thicken up throughout the day. This one is not very aggressive as far as any rain is concerned just a couple of these scattered showers even into the wee hours of Sunday morning. This computer model does a little bit more of a broad brush, but it's not overly aggressive with rain either. Most of it is going to be down here along the coastal plain with a system just kind of sliding up the coast. And then in the wee hours, again, a couple of leftover little wraparound showers and that'll be about it. So I wouldn't worry about that's by the way, the next chance of rain that comes in here by Tuesday, small chance of rain. Yeah, there'd be a couple of showers around tomorrow. I really wouldn't alter any outdoor plans. Just won't be as pretty as today and as Sunday. 63 degrees at noon today. So we're going to warm up nicely. We gain about 20 between now and noon. 68 for a high temperature. Light wind out of the uh, northeast, roughly 5, 10 miles per hour. It's going to cool off quickly tonight. Down in the low 40s again tomorrow. And then the clouds increase throughout the day. Can't rule out a couple of showers here. I think most of us aren't going to see anything as far as any rain tomorrow. And then um, it's clear out on Sunday, 70 degrees. Monday, beautiful day as well. A couple of showers Tuesday, a couple of showers on Thursday. Thank you, Michael. 523, 45 degrees. You love chocolate, specifically M&M's. You are in luck. The Mars Retail Group is opening three M&M Interactive stores. Why do you want to make a visit? Coming up next. Welcome back. It is now 526. In your morning consumer headlines, Motorola's latest version of its vintage Razor phone is about to hit the market. This edition isn't a flip phone. It's actually foldable. It will be available for pre-sale online and at Verizon and Walmart on Sunday. But it is not cheap. It's going to cost you, get this, $1,500. It's scheduled to be in stores on February 6th. Over the next two years, three new M&M interactive stores will be opening. There'll be a Disney Springs in Orlando, Mall of America in Minneapolis, and Berlin, Germany. 
Uh, officials with Mars say the stores will celebrate the culture and spirit of the local community in design and merchandise. Attendees will be able to see the iconic wall of chocolate and be able to customize their own M&M candies, which is fun, but could be a pricey proposition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Calories and in Last M&M world I think I was in, probably Las Vegas, Nevada. There's oh, that's that right. One. They do have one. Yeah, a big one. Yeah. Uh, 527, 45 degrees. New York City working on banning cashless stores. What you should know about the new law. More details on Border Patrol officers who were directed to stop and question travelers with uh, of Iranian descent. That's next on GMSA. And it is Cowboy Breakfast. We have Sky 12 out and about this morning flying above Cowboys Dance Hall where thousands of people have descended to get some free food. Right now, we want to get back to some late-breaking news out of Houston. Police there on the scene of a large explosion. It's happened in the 4500 block of Gessner Road in West Houston, not far from our sister station KPRC. Houston police sent out a tweet just a short while ago. Well, some people have reported hearing a loud explosion. They actually felt buildings in the area shake, but it's unclear right now what caused the explosion or if anyone was hurt. We are working to get more information and we'll bring it to you as soon as it becomes available. It is Friday, January 24th. Good morning. You're watching GMSA. Thanks for being with us this morning. I have the area of Perrin Vital and 410 could be a little busy traffic wise today. It already looks a little moderate for 530 in the morning, so I expect it's going to get very backed up. So if you're going to work that way today expect a little bit of a delay yes cowboys dance hall area very busy we've got thousands of people out there helicopter overhead happens to be that's us sky 12. it's us yep. yeah. cowboy breakfast in perfect weather for it yeah you nothing to complain about this year it's a little bit on the chilly side but hey you're with you know 30,000 of your closest friends so sure. you just kind of huddle up <laughs> got coffee and, and uh hot meal. oh and the biscuits and gravy and mm. okay back to the Topic at hand. I squirrel 43 degrees this morning. Uh, temperatures are close to normal and not much of a breeze out there, so we don't have to worry about any uh, strong winds. And then it's going to be another gorgeous day today, basically a repeat of yesterday 68 for a high temperature. And overall, the weekend looks pretty good. One little kind of fly in the ointment, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Here's a look off to the east, and the sun is going to be coming up in a couple of hours, and it should be a spectacular sunrise again today. Oh my goodness gracious, what great weather, especially after some of the lousy mornings we had this week as far as the weather was concerned and traffic. 36 right now, Comfort, 44 Randolph, 42 up the road in New Braunfels, and uh, 40 in Hondo. Mold is on the high side. It really went up after the rain that we had and the kind of damp weather for the past couple of days. Now, the updated count with the drier air in place, the updated count later on this morning. Hopefully that number is going to be dropping down and given the fact we have some drier air today and then tomorrow we do have another rain chance coming on in here. Like I said, not a big chance of rain. Sunday looks absolutely perfect. Details on the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Uh, I know there were some incidents earlier this morning. Anything going on right now, Nick? Right now, it looks like we may have an accident on 35 in Ben Zingleman. I talked to my buddies down at Trans Guy. They're trying to find it for me on the cameras. So still up in the air, possibly an accident. That's kind of close to where that cowboy breakfast is, 35 in Ben Zingleman. So I will just, uh, you know, uh, keep you updated on that. Remember, Spurs game tonight. So if you are going to go to that, expect traffic. It is a Friday night, whether you go uh, 10, 90 to 10 uh, to Houston Street or back around to 35 North to Houston Street or to AT&T Center Parkway. You know, uh, give yourself some time today. Friday night traffic could get a little bad on the way to that Spurs game. Taking a look outside at the Trans Guy. 10 in Frio, inbounds and outbounds looking good. 10 at Callahan looking light. Nice, good traffic there. And let's see what else. 10 in Hildebrand looking good as well. Well, I hope everyone has a great Friday morning. Mark, Leslie. All right, we're off and running. Let's check back in with Sarah Costa live at Cowboys Dance Hall for this year's Cowboy Breakfast. A lot of food out there. Uh, what can you tell us about the event? Well, they've been doing this for 42 years. It's the world's largest cooked breakfast. And I am at the Rudy's Taco Stand area. And we have Ulysses here. Ulysses has been doing this for 20 years. He's kind of like the taco hype man. And he keeps the line moving. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. He doesn't mess around. I don't even want to interrupt him to talk to him. <laughs> I don't. You, you listen, Ulysses. What's, what's the trick to keeping everyone going? Well, you have to uh, stimulate them a little. 
Make it out. Wake up. Wake up. He, I need him as an alarm clock. I mean, this guy is getting everyone going this morning, and that's why you can come out here for a free taco and not have to wait a long time in line because you got guys like this making sure that line is going. I'm going to move down the taco line. I heard I was challenged for a, how, to, how to roll a taco. Is that correct? I had a taco challenge this morning. Right, Miss Lisa? Yes. Okay, so what do we have here? We have um, Rudy's barbecue tacos. They smell good. Is this my taco? Then yes. I, I'm gonna have you hold the microphone for me. So I didn't practice this like our reporter Alicia Barreta did because I like to learn on the spot. Okay, so what do I do? I'm watching you. I'm gonna watch you, Lisa. Okay, she rolled. Oh, this is easy. Come on, I know how to do this. No practice needed. There we go. What would, what would you grade that? Um, from one to ten, I'll give that a nine. Oh, I got a nine! A shy nine! Did I beat Alicia? Yeah, yes. Yes, thank you. That's all that counted. I was a better taco roller than our reporter, Alicia Barreta. Thank you, Lisa. You're very welcome. You guys, are, you guys are doing a great job making Rudy's tacos. Come on. But you can come out here. It's going to be going on until... 8.30 today, kicked off at 4.30 this morning. There are, they're preparing to have about 30,000 people out here. They have free entertainment. They have chorizo tacos. They have bean and cheese tacos. They have Rudy's tacos. Uh, earlier, we were at the gravy and biscuit station. Hey, Sarah. What's behind me? More chorizo. Yeah, yes, yes, Leslie. Uh, I have another challenge for you. Okay, what's my challenge? You have to ride the mechanical bull. That is also a rite of passage covering this breakfast every year okay all right okay let's say then, like 6 30 it, 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 6 30 ish okay then i will i want to tell you something i'm actually pretty good i'm not saying that i have college experience <laughs> i've ridden a mechanical bull and i don't want i don't want to say that i won a competition in college but i'm saying that so, well, I'll take so the she did okay <gasps> that's fantastic all right. Okay. all right cowgirl up okay we're gonna look forward to that around 6 30 6 45 something like that all right, Sarah Costa. I'm excited. Yay! She's risen to the challenge. All right. We'll High expectations now. No doubt about that. In your morning headlines, U.S. officials at the Canadian border were directed to stop and question travelers of Iranian descent. That's according to allegations made by an anonymous Customs and Border Patrol officer who wrote in an email sent to an immigration lawyer. The alleged action began shortly after the killing of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. The National Iranian American Council filed a complaint with the Department of Homeland Security after it heard reports of U.S. travelers being held for extra questioning at the border. For the past three years, the Trump administration has stood against abortion. And today, President Donald Trump will do so in a historic way. Seen as John Lawrence reports. President Trump's stance on abortion is clear. We will always defend the very first right in the Declaration of Independence, and that is the right to life. And on Friday, he becomes the first president to appear at the annual March for Life event in Washington, D.C. I believe someone has to speak up for the, the so babies. Many, they're babies. They're the purest of us all. Last year, the president addressed the crowd, but he did so on a video feed. This is a movement founded on love and grounded in the nobility and dignity of every human life. Planned Parenthood's political arm blasted the Trump administration, saying it undermines access to health care and is calling for supporters to make sure he's a private citizen after the 2020 election. Friday's rally comes one day after Tennessee Governor Bill Lee announced a fetal heartbeat bill that calls for banning abortions once a heartbeat is detected, often before a woman even knows she is pregnant. We work together to enhance that bill so that we believe that it would be one worth fighting for to make its way through the courts. No state has been able to put such a bill into lasting practice with courts ruling them unconstitutional. Democratic officials have already criticized the proposal. How is it comprehensively pro-life if we don't provide health care? We don't provide child care? We don't fund education? I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, people are remembering the life of journalist and novelist Jim Blair. He was one of the pioneers of news and public broadcasting and a graduate of San Antonio's Thomas Jefferson High School. He was one of the anchors of the McNeil Lair Report. It eventually became the PBS NewsHour. He moderated 12 presidential debates, that is the most by anyone, and covered the assassination of John F. Kennedy in Dallas. He stepped down from his PBS show in 1995. Lair came back to San Antonio and talked to students at Jefferson in 2017, and he was given an award by the SAISD Foundation. He was 85 years old. 
New York City on track to ban cashless food and retail businesses. The new law would protect seniors, homeless people, and undocumented residents. Under the law, businesses can continue with cashless transactions if they provide a machine that exchanges cash for a gift card. San Francisco, Cisco rather, and Philadelphia have already banned cashless businesses. Now to the Spurs. They take on the Phoenix Suns tonight at the AT&T Center. Tip-off expected around 7.30. As always, go Spurs go. 540, 45 degrees. A new taco shop is coming to the Pearl. When to expect Saytown Tacos coming up next. In your time now, it's 542. Well, the bottling department at the Pearl is opening its doors to a new taco spot. Saytown Tacos is a veteran to the Pearl Farmer's Market. It's taking the place of the good kind and is expected to open in late February. To read about the menu, just go to ksat.com. Just a reminder, our KSAT Community Blood Drive kicks off Monday, January 27th. We're teaming up with the University Health System to help replenish the city's blood supply. Blood Drive going on through Friday, January 31st. But you don't have to wait till then. It's National Blood Donor Month. Uh, comes to an end. Keep in mind, University Health System always accepts blood donations. You can schedule an appointment at donateblooddoday.com. You can find all this information on our website at Kesswear, ksat.com. 543, still 45 degrees. Singer and songwriter Billie Eilish has been working with her brother to on, on her latest project. Still ahead on GMSA, what new projects the siblings are now working on. Welcome back, 546. It's our work time for us to check in with Alicia Barrera at Cowboy Breakfast, which is the unofficial start to the San Antonio stock show and rodeo season. Alicia, did you hear that uh, Sarah apparently beat your time in preparing the taco? What? Actually, I really do. I, I believe it because I wasn't too good at it when I was over there. I was taking my sweet time. But hey, at least she took on the challenge, right. so I'm proud of Sarah. Right of passage for her. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> well, right. Well, you guys, like, all right, so that's that's the front over there. That's where people want to get. I'm over here still towards the middle. If you'll follow me over here to your right, I have two of these coveted items that that goes. These aren't two that I rolled. They're probably two of the ones that Sarah did. Who here. wants some tacos? That way you don't have to stand in line. Look, we've got one taker right here. here. Sir, right right there. How long did you stand in line? Uh, or how been, early did you get we here? We just walked in. We just walked it's in. It's our first time. Yeah. It's your first time? <laughs> yes. We just walked in. So. What's, the, what's your thought process so far? How are you liking it? It's we like great. it. We just, yeah. Yeah, something different, you know. So figured. And what made you want to come out here, get up so early? I was off, so I said, you know what, let's just go. <laughs> and then you, ma'am, were you dragged out here? You really wanted to come? Uh, no, I wanted to come. <laughs> All right. Thank you all so much. These tacos are good. And the, the tacos are good, and that's very true. Good. Last year I tried some. I haven't gotten to taste any just yet, but I'm really hoping to make it back over there once again to try those. Mark and Leslie, I'm taking orders. What do y'all want? We have chorizo and egg. We have potato and egg, bacon and egg, and then the barbecue and the sausage wrap. What do y'all choose? I, I want to taste everything, please. Mm. Yeah, I, I like oh. the ones with the, the sausage. Very well. Yum. All right, Leslie, I am impressed. <laughs> All right, I'll bring a variety for you guys. Yes, and biscuits and gravy. Back to you. All right, Alicia Bedetta live at Cowboy Bis Breakfast. And if you're not sure where it is, I'm looking at Transcar right now. There's a giant spotlight out there. Just follow the spotlight. It looks like a movie premiere, premiere that happens to include biscuits and tacos. Oh, you can't go wrong with that. And I'm sure the traffic is probably pretty heavy in that area. Definitely, Leslie. It's starting to back up. You'll be able to see right now in that Transguide shop Mark was talking about. That access road there on 410 leading to that 35-410 merger before Cowboys is backing up. So I'll show you that now. But first, we got an accident right here. It looks like officers are on scene at the 100 block of Arlington Court with a motor vehicle pedestrian accident. They're working that scene currently. Been there for about 10 minutes. Uh, so if you're in that area, uh, avoid Arlington Court. Taking a look at some drive times now. If you're on 35 southbound from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, 15 minutes. And if you're on 35 southbound from Loop 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. Not too bad there. Here we go. Here's that shot Mark was talking about. Looks like that spotlight from Batman right there. But see, look at the access road here. It is really starting to back up. So just uh, be very careful there. And then right here on the main lanes, it's also backing up pretty good too. So expect a delay if you're heading there. Uh, taking a look at other places in the city, 410 and Jackson Keller starting to pick up very well. 90 and Medio Creek, it's always backed up there going eastbound 
and uh, 37 at Jones on the southeast side is looking very good at this time. So that's good news for everyone, especially if you're heading out to work right now. So instead, instead of the wings in the sky, yeah. it's an open biscuit. Yeah. I was going to say it's a giant. I was going to say it's a giant taco, so it looks like half moon out there. That, that's either <laughs> one. It's <laughs> open to interpretation. That would be my attention. Like a cloud formation. So I think either one of those would work. You know, when when Alicia was going through the kind of the, the menu, the sausage wrapped in you know, a tortilla. tortilla. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're, you're put mustard on it. Salivating a little. I can't put a little bit. Love the passion. Like that. So it's nice and juicy. You bite into it, and it just kind of runs all over the place. Mm. I'm really darn hungry. Right? Why did I hit? I don't know. know but Ow. gosh. <laughs> but I can. I, yeah, I Calm can just, down. It's like I've gotten that taste in my mouth. Excuse me. You've already Producer? been wrapped. I've been wrapped. Oh yes, my goodness. you've been wrapped yeah, like a sausage trap. taco. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gretchen. Duke. Yes, give me a sausage trap, please. Uh, <laughs> this is a great picture, kind of a lonely-looking picture in a way, but a beautiful sunset. Thank you very much. And we have bird calls in the background too. Thank you very much for that, Mark. Uh, it's going to be gorgeous sunrise this morning. Beautiful. We haven't had a, a cowboy breakfast weather like this in a long time. Nice and crisp and cool out there. Almost down to normal low temperatures. We've got some mid 30s in parts of the hill country. So maybe even some freezing readings out in the low lying areas in the hill country. Uh, not much of a wind chill. At times we've had a puff of a breeze out there, but. No big deal, and wind's not going to be a factor this morning nor later on today. A little bit of moisture aloft in the atmosphere, so that means perhaps a light milky shade to the sky. Other than that, I mean, it's kind of, like I said, splitting hairs. It's going to be beautiful, almost every bit as beautiful as yesterday. Humidity is still on the lower side. But we are going to see the dew point temperatures come up as we go in through the day tomorrow. That's going to help with uh, some more clouds. Clouds are going to move in here fairly quickly, it looks like, in the morning. And then we do have a slight chance for a couple of showers late in the afternoon and tomorrow evening. Although it kind of depends on which computer model you look at. This one has the clouds moving on in here. But it is not that aggressive as far as any rain is concerned. Maybe a couple of uh, showers. This tries to get them into the wee hours of Sunday morning. And then this computer model, which also shows the clouds moving on in here, has a few more showers there along the coastal plain and then a few of the wraparounds into the wee hours of Sunday morning. So it'd be, again, late tomorrow. We're going to have a lot of clouds around tomorrow, but late and then in the overnight hours. So probably if it does rain, it's not going to mess up any weekend plans as far as tomorrow is concerned. But again, that's going to be very few and far between, and most of it's going to be down the uh, south and east. Then we go into jump ahead to Tuesday. We've got another little disturbance moving on through here to give us another chance for some rain on Tuesday. And it looks like there's another small chance of rain by Thursday of next week. So this is nice to see every couple of days, a couple of chances of rain around here. 63 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, absolutely beautiful, beautiful day. A couple of high wispy clouds, perhaps 68 for a high temperature, a little bit above normal. Great looking, almost identical to yesterday. Tomorrow we are going to have more clouds around here. A few showers late and most of those may actually hold off until the, uh, the wee hours and the overnight hours into the early, early Sunday morning. Then we're going to clear out nicely on Sunday, get up to 70, 65 tomorrow morning. And Monday, another beautiful day. Tuesday, small chance of rain. Thursday, again, another chance for a couple of showers. We like this pattern. Mm -hmm. Thank you much, Mike. 552, 45 degrees. The Human Rights Campaign is honoring singer and actress Janelle Monet with an Equality Award. After the break, what the singer is receiving that award for. That's where Cynthia Erivo is up for Best Actress at the Oscars for Harriet. She'll also perform on the Oscars show, which will feature all five Best Original Song nominees. The Academy says Erivo will sing Stand Up from Harriet. Edina Menzel will sing Into the Unknown from Frozen 2. Chrissy Metz will perform I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough. Elton John will do I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man. And Randy Newman will perform I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away from Toy Story 4. I had a dream I got everything I wanted Billie Eilish has released her music video for Everything I Wanted, which she also directed. Eilish co-wrote the track with her brother Phineas, who co-stars in the video. The siblings are also working on the theme song for the next James Bond movie, No Time to Die, which opens April 10th. Look in there, look in there, Janelle, look in there. 
The Human Rights Campaign is honoring Janelle Monet. The singer, producer, actor and activist will receive the HRC Equality Award for using her global platform to share a message of celebrating authenticity and embracing all of who we are. The HRC notes that Monet dedicated her 2018 album Dirty Computer to young LGBTQ people. She'll be honored at a dinner in LA March 28th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, it's about three till. Police still tracking a cold case, that of a murder that happened two years ago today. In our next hour, we'll take a look at the case of David Benavides. Walt, you get you updated on the very latest after a massive explosion in West Houston. But right now, looking at Trans Sky, there's Tenant Callahan. Nick Solis is here. He'll get you updated on time saver traffic. It's Friday. We'll be right back. Breaking right now, we are learning about an explosion in Houston. Houston firefighters are on the scene, and Houston police are working to gather information. Back here at home, outside with live cam, bone dry and chilly yet again. Tens of thousands headed towards free breakfast on the northeast side. We'll get you updated on the forecast for Cowboy Breakfast Friday and your weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Friday. It is January 24th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. If you are going to venture out to all, all the crowds at Cowboy Breakfast, you might, might need a little jacket. It's cool out there this morning. Not bad, though. All in all, pretty good Cowboy Breakfast forecast. Especially when you think just yesterday and the day before that, it would have been lousy out there. But yes. yeah, it's fantastic. Do grab a jacket, though, because we have some uh, pretty chilly temperatures. It's in the 40s right around town. 43 now out there at the airport. 42 Port SA and then some mid-30s out in portions of the hill country. There's not much of a breeze at all. Maybe a little puff of wind, but not anything to really stir up the wind that much or create that much of a wind chill. Mold from yesterday's reading is on the high side. Now with the drier air in place, hopefully that's going to be going down later on today. But look, no mountain cedar was showing up yesterday. As far as temperatures, yeah, we're going to stay uh, pretty steady right uh, around low 40s and those 30s uh, throughout the rest of the morning. And then a nice big warm up throughout the day. We are going to be getting up into the uh, low 60s already by noon. Plenty of sunshine, just a spectacular day. Maybe a little milky shade to the sky or a high wispy cloud. and That'll be about it. And then we'll top off with a high today up to 68 and plenty of sunshine. Great looking day. Overall, I think the weekend's going to be very, very nice, especially Sunday. Tomorrow, we'll explain coming up in a couple of minutes. Not bad, though. Uh, time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. And earlier, we had a few incidents going on there, but doesn't look like anything right now. Not right now. Not in the major highways. Little incidents on the roadways. But for people going to the Cowboy Breakfast, weather-wise, traffic-wise, it's looking good, huh, Mike? It really is looking good. Other than this accident right here, it's on the, the 110 block of Arlington Court. Now, officers are there working a motor vehicle pedestrian accident. Uh, just, they are still on scene. Just uh, use caution or avoid that street in general uh, if you have to head in that direction. Uh, taking a look at some drive times here. If you're on 35 southbound from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, 15 minutes. And if you're on 35 southbound from Loop 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. Good uh, times there. Now let's take a look outside. This is currently uh, near the Cowboy Breakfast. There's a spotlight. Uh, Austin Highway is it's going through times of back. It's backing up a little bit there and then it, it traffic tends to flow smoothly. So right now, if you are on the way, you're still expecting a smooth commute. It is looking good right there at 410 and Austin Highway if you're headed to the Cowboy Breakfast. Breakfast. Other than that, I hope everyone's having a great morning. Mark. All right, Nick, thank you very much. We do have breaking news out of Houston. Local police say there was a large explosion at a building on the west side of the city. Houston officers are saying it happened off of the West Park Tollway and caused windows to rattle for miles. Firefighters are working to get to the scene and our sister station KPRC is sending reporters to cover it. It is a developing story. We will update you as we get more information. Well, we've already seen hundreds, perhaps thousands of people go through the lines at Cowboy Breakfast celebrating the annual tradition. Let's check in with our Sarah Costa who's been there all morning. Hi there, Sarah. We're still looking forward to you riding the um, mechanical bull at some point this morning. And I promise you, at the 6.30 hour, I will ride that bull. Uh, <laughs> they're trying to get me to ride a mechanical bull. But I found a bunch of uh, little cowboys and cowgirls this morning. Guys, this is the most adorable thing in the whole world. They all have outfits. They're all rescues. We have 14-year-old, what is her name? Coco. 
Coco and she's the queen. We have Stevie over here. Stevie is blind. We have a three-legged Chihuahua. Miss Thelma and Rudy, you guys have been coming out to the cowboy breakfast for 20 years. In about 15 years, you said you've been bringing your little ones. Of course, yes. It started with her, the queen. And then we all of a sudden, we have a lot of fur babies in the house. They're all rescues except her. And you were saying the outfits, they, they don't like leaving the house without the outfits. No, they never leave naked. <laughs> <laughs> they have a, a bigger wardrobe than I do. Definitely. <laughs> they the all dress. room is one whole dog wardrobe area. And I just want to say Mark here, look at him. He's like had too many tacos. He's just like, that's the taco coma after the cowboy breakfast right there. That is so precious. And this is Stevie. Stevie is blind and he's just a sweetheart. And I can't get enough of this. You, you find me dogs. And I'll just stay by the dogs all day long. Well, thank you guys. Enjoy your breakfast tacos. I think they've. I think Mark has had too many breakfast tacos. He's already asleep. But let's go check out the line. The line is at its peak right now at the six o'clock hour, starting at four thirty this morning. What time did you guys get here this morning? We got here about five o'clock. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. How long did you have to wait in line for tacos? You know, we circled around both probably like 10, 15 minutes. But right now, probably about thirty minutes is the wait. Is that a good time? You've been coming for 20 years. It's about 30 minutes of normal time? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And then, you know, why do you want to come out? Why, why have you been doing this for 20 years? It's a tradition. Uh, it's actually her first year. This is my wife. It's my first year, too. Really? Are you having so much fun? Yes. Oh, yeah. First timers. Yes, definitely. I would tell, I'm definitely going to come every year from now on. What's your first impression? Um, great people, music that was playing earlier. It's just amazing. I'm having a great time too. Well, you guys keep warm. And how many tacos have y'all had? About six, seven. Yeah, we lost count. <laughs> yeah, no, don't count. Calories don't count during a cowboy breakfast. You gotta kick off rodeo, right? Don't count your tacos, don't worry, you're good. There you go. Well, you guys enjoy your time. Enjoy your first cowboy's breakfast. Like I will as well. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Well, you can see the line, but they're going to be here until 8.30 today. 42 years of cowboy breakfast going on. And like Leslie and Mark have challenged me at the 6.30 hour, I will get on the mechanical bull, and I'll see if I can stay on. <laughs> Back right, to you guys. Start stretching now, Sarah. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Okay, there she goes. Good job. Thank, Thank you, you, Sarah. Uh, Coast Alive at <laughs> Cowboy Breakfast Northeast Side. House impeachment managers will have one more day to argue their case in President Trump's impeachment trial. Democrats arguing how the facts apply to the laws or pertains to the first article of impeachment, which is abuse of power. The president's lawyers are expected to begin their presentation tomorrow, as we have done all week. If ABC has a special report, it will air here on KSAT. Should that be the case, we will live stream our newscast on KSAT.com and on KSAT TV. Well, while the impeachment trial is going on in Washington, people in Iowa are experiencing a political ad blitz. About a week and a half from the crucial caucuses, presidential candidates doing whatever they can to increase turnout and try to sway support. CNN's Nadia Romero reports from Washington. We knew the Senate impeachment trial would create an opportunity for those candidates who are not senators so they can go all over the country and specifically in those early voting states to pitch their message. But nearly all of the candidates are throwing money in Iowa, buying up airtime on the airwaves to flood Iowans with their message. President Trump and I are counting on you to be there on caucus night. From caucusing lessons. We're going to tell you everything you need to know to participate in the Iowa caucus and help Amy win. To campaign pitches. Iowa soon the election will be in your hands. Iowans are being inundated with ads. It's bringing a lot more opportunity, not only back to Iowa, but back to the United States. According to the most recent poll, there's a horse race for the top spot at the caucuses, but only 43% of likely Iowa caucus goers are firm in their picks, Amy, meaning there's still time for candidates to change minds. Amy has determination and grit. She's not afraid to take on the big issues. To move the needle, Democratic White House hopefuls poured major money into Iowa. Tom is good for Iowa because, like so many of us, he understands the importance of climate change. Tom Steyer is the biggest spender, followed by Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg. With so much on the line, I'm asking you to join me to help turn the page on our politics. The political ad blitz will be done by early February. Until then... 
Iowans should brace for more commercials as candidates attempt to convince people to show up and support their campaigns come caucus night. I'm Andrew Yang and I approve this message and ask for your support on February 3rd to fight for the future our families deserve. Remember Marianne Williamson, the former presidential candidate? Well, she is now endorsing Andrew Yang. She was out campaigning for him all day Thursday. And Bernie Sanders, well, he just continues to gain momentum. And a new poll release of New Hampshire voters, he is only widening his lead there. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. U.S. officials at the Canadian border are being allegedly directed to stop and question travelers of Iranian descent. An anonymous Customs and Border Patrol officer sent an email to the immigration lawyer outlining the allegations. The person says the process began shortly after the killing of Iranian General Hassan Soleimani. The Customs and Border Patrol agency denies there was a directive to question people of Iranian descent. President Trump expected to sign a new U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade deal next week. It's been one of his top priorities since taking office. Senators passed the agreement last week, just days before the impeachment trial began. That includes new provisions for digital commerce, more stringent rules for the origin of auto parts, and new minimum wage requirements for certain auto workers. A report from the U.S. Internal Trade, rather International Trade Commission, says the deal will likely have a moderate impact on the economy. The Trump administration ended federal protection for many of the nation's millions of miles of protected waterways. The heads of the Environmental Protection Agency and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers signed the bill narrowing what types of waterways qualify for federal protection. It changes the original Clean Water Act, which has been in place for half a century. Those who support the bill say it puts added strains on business. However, environmental advocates say the reformed act will allow more dumping in rivers, lakes, and streams. In your morning, consumer news, the Trump administration expected to unveil plans today to crack down on counterfeit goods sold online. Several reports say law enforcement are planning immediate action to fight the sale of those items. The government also urging e-commerce sites to do more to fight counterfeits. The credit score may be about to change. The company behind FICA scores overhauling the way it calculates them. Consumers who well, let me see this. Consumers with rising debt or who fall behind on loan payments will see bigger hits to their score. But on the other side of it, consumers who already have high FICO scores and continue to manage their credit and debt could see their scores actually shoot up. Former CEO of Wells Fargo now banned from ever working for a bank again. John Stump ousted as CEO in October of 2016 amid that scandal of the creation of millions of fake accounts. He has settled a federal case and will pay over a $17 million fine. And greeting card company Papyrus has filed for bankruptcy and now says it will close all U.S. and Canadian stores by the end of next month. 611, 43 degrees. Tinder wants everyone to be safe on dates. See what feature the dating app is releasing to help keep people out of danger. Outside with Lycam, follow the spotlight to Cowboy Breakfast at uh, Cowboys Dance Hall out there on the northeast side. We'll check back in with Nixie out traffic's looking out there off of 410 near the 35 interchange. And Mike will get us updated on your weekend forecast. Hallelujah. It is Friday morning. <laughs> Welcome back 15 minutes after 6. Well, the Cowboy Breakfast is the unofficial start to the rodeo and a tradition for many families. Alicia Beretta live in the taco line where they are uh, making some memories that many will never f forget. Good morning, Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Good, good morning. Hi, you guys. Well, I have two tacos for two very special people. And again, people, families come out here year after year, have made this a family tradition. I actually found a couple here who have braved the lines. They actually took the day off. Can I get your name? Jennifer. And then you, sir? Hector. Hector. All right. So for y'all, how long have y'all been coming out here? Um, so this year will be two years together. And how special is it for you? Um, it's pretty special. We got to spend time together here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How special is it going to be for you this year? It'll be very special. Yeah. Well, we have a special surprise. Take it away. Jennifer? We, oh. we got him. Will you marry me? Yeah. Congratulations! 
<laughs> you guys, Hector has been planning this, and he he reached out to us. Yeah. How much more special is it now for you? Very special. Yeah. Did you have any idea? Did you have any idea? No. Kind of just dragged her along. Well, I know they've they've been waiting in line, but really Hector has been waiting for this moment. So we have some talk, some some sparkly things for you too. A taco for you eat, so you don't have to stand in line. <laughs> Thank you so much, and congratulations. Can we get a look at that ring? Mark Leslie, look at this. Hector, oh, congratulations. You did well. Oh, that's a very special oh, cowboy They say breakfast. congratulations. How long have y'all been dating for? Um, A little over two years. Congratulations. How excited are you now that you you proposed? You said yes. <laughs> well, I've been, been waiting for it for a while, so it's, it's real special. And she's the one I've always been waiting for. Oh, that's so special. And what better way here at the Cowboy Breakfast, the unofficial kickoff to rodeo. Let's rodeo. Let's get married. Well, y'all get married, right? <laughs> Back to you guys. Congratulations. You. Congratulations, Aww. gang. Oh, that was fun to see on live TV. Alicia, thank you very awesome. much. Thank you. So happy to be a part of that and share that special moment with them. All right now, 618. Let's check the roadways, Nick. Hey, Leslie, yeah, everything is looking, well, first, let me say good morning to everyone. I hope you're having a great Friday morning. Right now, things are looking smooth out there. We had a couple of accidents earlier. Right now, those are all cleared up. If you are heading to the Cowboy Breakfast, expect a smooth commute all around the city. Things are looking great. 35 and New Braunfels Avenue looking good. Tenant Crossroads, traffic's trying to pick up a little bit, but not too bad. And let's see what else we have here. Let's do 1604 in Marbach on the, on the far west side. Looking great. And, uh... At 35 in Brooklyn, also looking light. So if you're heading to the Cowboy Breakfast right now, still smooth commute. However, I think 410 East is going to start backing up here any second. There you go. You saw it right there. It is starting to back up. So expect a delay. Maybe leave 15 minutes early today. Got to be honest. Cowboy Breakfast forecast right now is just about perfect for this yeah. year. Yeah. Nice and cool out there. Not too. You don't want it too hot. You know, in the morning no, or muggy not too or anything cold. like that. But no, it's it beautiful. We've got clear skies. There's nothing as far as any precipitation at all. It's going to be a fantastic day today. So good is deal. that is that first proposal that we've ever had on the air? Cowboy that Breakfast? I can I recall. So. I don't think we've ever had any other. I don't. Proposals. I don't remember ever having. I mean, some people one are married there. to their tacos, but I don't think we've never had <laughs> anyway. this kind of thing. Well, it, many years of happiness together for them. Hey, here's a great picture. There's the uh, kitty. It's a little deceiving when you first glance at this picture, but there's the uh, cat laying there on the pavement, soaking up the sunshine, doing what cats do best. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And no early signs of the sunrise yet. Still about. Uh, hour a little more than an hour away until the sun peaks over the horizon but yeah it's going to be just spectacular 43 right now in town 34 going up the road in through bernie 36 comfort and 45 over in new Braunfels. a little bit of a wind chill in spots yeah, just a puff of a breeze out there so not any big deal and we've got pretty dry air upstairs in the atmosphere as well low humidity down here at the surface and maybe a little bit of moisture so perhaps a kind of a slight milky shade of the sky, but it's going to be a gorgeous day today. Just pretty much a repeat of yesterday. And as far as the humidity, it's going to stay on the comfortable side throughout the rest of today. But as we go in through the day tomorrow, humidity dew point temperatures really start to come up. That's going to help out with more clouds around here. So we'll stay fairly clear overnight and then Probably right after sunrise, it looks like, is when the clouds are really going to start to move on in here. We'll keep a lot of clouds around throughout the day. It doesn't mean we won't see any sunshine, but just leaning toward the cloudier side. And the humidity stays up throughout the overnight hours and into early Sunday. That is going to help out also with some showers. Now, computer models... It depends on which one you look at, maybe a little bit more bullish here and there as far as rain chances, but this one really doesn't have any rain moving in and basically along the coastal plain throughout late afternoon and dinner time and then perhaps a couple of wraparound showers and not into the wee hours. So I think most of tomorrow is going to be rain free if you got some uh, outdoor activities tomorrow and then it's going to clear out nicely. We'll start off with a couple of clouds on Sunday. Plenty of sunshine then after that, as well as Monday. Tuesday, another disturbance slides down here, and that's going to give us another chance for uh, some rain late to Monday into Tuesday, and then we'll clear out, and then it looks like another disturbance is going to slide on in here once we get into Thursday. So we've got this nice flow coming in over the weekend, and by Monday, Tuesday, here's the next little wave that moves through. The next wave comes through there by, like I said, about uh, Thursday, and for then 
next weekend, looking ahead to the official start of rodeo with Western Heritage and Cattle Drive. That looks like it's going to be pretty nice. Not too hot, not too cold. 63 degrees today at noon, sunny skies and maybe a couple of high clouds out there and 68 for high temperature today. So just a beautiful, beautiful day today and pretty nice tomorrow. Again, more clouds though. A couple of showers are possible late tomorrow. And a few clouds starting off on Sunday, but other than that, boy, it's going to be a beautiful day on Sunday. Monday, gorgeous as well. One or two showers Tuesday, one or two showers on Thursday. All right. Overall, pretty good looking forecast. Mm -hmm. 622, 43 degrees. Pop star Demi Lovato opening up in a candid new interview days before returning to the spotlight at the Grammys. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. After Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. It's tough to quit smoking cold turkey. So Chantix can help you quit slow turkey. Along with support, Chantix is proven to help you quit. With Chantix, you can keep smoking at first and ease into quitting. Chantix reduces the urge so when the day arrives, you'll be more ready to kiss cigarettes goodbye. When you try to quit smoking, with or without Chantix, you may have nicotine withdrawal symptoms. Stop Chantix and get help right away if you have changes in behavior or thinking. Aggression, hostility, depressed mood, suicidal thoughts or actions, seizures, new or worse harder blood vessel problems, sleepwalking, or life-threatening allergic and skin reactions. Decrease alcohol use. Use caution driving or operating machinery. Tell your doctor if you've had mental health problems. The most common side effect is nausea. Quit smoking. Slow turkey. Talk to your doctor about Chantix. In this morning's GMA First Look, pop star Demi Lovato is speaking out about the heartfelt song she plans to sing at the Grammy Awards this Sunday as she makes her big return to the stage. In a new interview on Apple Music's New Music Daily with Zane Lowe, the pop star says the heartfelt song was written during a critical period in her life. So this song was written and recorded actually uh, very shortly before everything happened. In July of 2018, the star was treated for an overdose and several subsequent medical complications. Lovato says that she has a new understanding of what the song meant to her then and what it means now. I recorded it, went through everything, and then it made sense later of like, okay, that's why these lyrics were so emotional when I was singing it. And coming up at 7 a.m., we have even more from Demi's candid interview. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, New York. Tinder will soon have a way to signal a date has gone wrong. The dating app adding a panic button that users can hit to alert police if something criminally goes wrong on their date. Another will allow daters to check in and tell friends where they are. The features will be part of a new section of Tinder's app called the Safety Center. Get ready for your cable TV bill to go up, especially if you're a Comcast customer. The company is raising rates this year after losing nearly 150,000 subscribers in the last quarter. But Comcast added 400,000 internet subscribers as it, as it prepares to launch its own streaming service. Tetris fans can breathe a little easier this morning. Days after EA announced it's shutting down its mobile game in April, a developer has released an official version for both Android and iOS. It is available to download right now. Your time now, 627, 43 degrees outside. And we want to go back to Houston now where firefighters are battling a fire after a building explosion on the west side of the city. We will get you updated as we continue coverage right now with our sister station, KPRC. And here at home, checking the roadways with Trans Guide, we'll get an update on your traffic on this Friday morning. Still waiting on some more information on this breaking news out of Houston, where police say there was a large explosion at a building on the western side of the city. Houston police are saying it happened off of West Park Tollway in the Gessner Road area, caused windows to rattle for miles. Firefighters are working to get to the scene, as you see there. Our sister station, KPRC, sending reporters cover it as well. 
It's a developing story. We'll continue to follow it and bring you updates. A uh, resident out there on scene is telling uh, our sister station KPRC that it looks like a war zone. We'll obviously be able to see more as the sun rises there on West Houston. Still some smoke left over. Some of the initial reports is that it's possible this was some sort of gas explosion, but again, it's a large scene. You see a number of emergency vehicles there out there. We're trying to get more information and we'll have coverage continuing all morning and all day at our newscast and of course online at ksat.com. There were lots of flames not too long ago, so yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Good morning. It is Friday. It is January 24th. How are the roadways looking on this Friday? Perfect. If you're going to the Cowboy Breakfast, you're in for a smooth drive because not that many accidents out there. And you will need a coat, but otherwise it's... Perfect conditions for grabbing a free taco. Yeah, it really is perfect conditions. Just uh, make sure you do bundle up because temperatures are pretty chilly out there right now, and you will definitely need a coat to throughout the rest of the morning. We're in the kind of low 40s and some 30s in parts of the hill country. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise this morning and plenty of sunshine all day long. Nice warm up as well. We'll gain a good uh, 25, in some cases close to 30 degrees. Beautiful today, and most of the weekend is looking very nice. Now, a little bit of a. Mm, perhaps a glitch by later tomorrow. Here's a look outside with live cam and we're going to be seeing in about well, probably by the long weather segment, I would imagine in like 10 minutes or so, we should see the glow of the sunrise. Sun doesn't come up until almost 730 this morning and 38 in Helotus, 36 Bandera, 43 Stinson and 44 up the road right around Canyon Lake. Molds on the high side. This was yesterday's reading. Updated counts going to come out in about a half an hour and hopefully with some drier air, that number does tend to go down just a little bit. Yeah, like I said, overall, the weekend looks pretty good. We do have a small chance for a couple of showers, perhaps late tomorrow. I really wouldn't worry about it that much. We'll talk about that and take a look ahead to Sunday and next week coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Yeah, I would imagine. There we go. I would imagine that uh, traffic over there 410 is going to get a little more crowded as the morning rolls on. I think so too, Mike. You know, six o'clock and 530 were pretty crowded for, you know, 5 a.m. But yeah, definitely as you are heading out there eastbound 410 Austin Highway or coming from 35 South and exiting back around expected delay. Traffic is starting to pick up there at Cowboys Dance Hall where they're having the cowboy breakfast. Now we have this accident. Now I can't confirm this accident is still there or not, but it had just came out. It's an accident at a northbound I-30, H-35 at FM 3009 came in as a hit and run on the main lanes right now. It's still up in the air if it's there or not, or they moved out of the way. I'll, I'll keep you updated on that one, but expected delay if you're going northbound. If uh, uh, traffic times 151 eastbound to 1604 to 90, 10 minutes. And if you're on 90 eastbound to 1604 to 35, 14 minutes, that's looking good there. All right, let's take a look at Trans Guide. Here it is, uh, the Cowboy Breakfast. Definitely starting to get backed up. It seems like earlier we had a little bit more backup on Austin Highway. Uh, now uh, the traffic, which is moderate for this time, on the main lanes there at 410 eastbound is picking up too. So actually not that bad right now if you're heading out and you want to get a quick taco before work. Well, Mark. Thank you very much, Nick. What do you do on a Friday and head into the weekend in San Antonio, Texas? Well, you grab the bull by the horns and you head out to Cowboy Breakfast. We challenged our Sarah Costa earlier in the show to ride the mechanical bull at the Cowboy Breakfast. And I understand you are about to do it. Yeah, I'm I'm on the bull. Let's let's get this done. So Gary here says eight to 13 seconds is the average. I'm trying to beat that. And I heard that the strategy, my producer Jared said, is to really squeeze at the thighs and keep your body loose. All right, Gary, let's go. Oh my God, this is a lot harder than I thought. Oh my gosh, I'm really not in shape. The quads. <laughs> go, are not as Sarah, strong. go. Okay. Is anyone timing me? <laughs> Was I at least eight seconds? Uh, Gary says at least eight seconds, so thank you. Nicely thank done. Thank you guys. Can I get Applause, thank you, my fans. They're like, why are we clapping? Okay. <laughs> there we go. It's harder thank than it looks, guys. isn't it? She's winded. I'm really out of breath. <laughs> and I'm probably gonna be sore in the morning and I'm gonna forget what I did and I'm gonna remember this. It's Mark and Leslie's fault because of the mechanical bull challenge. Oh, I didn't do anything, it's yeah. Leslie's fault. Uh, you will be sore tomorrow. <laughs> I can guarantee that. But you did a great job. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, eight <laughs> seconds. So, you know. All right. Eight seconds. 
that's a winner. And I'm actually really sore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a way to wrap up this year's Cowboy Breakfast. Still a lot of folks out there. Thank you so much, Sarah. There, there are still a lot of folks out there. That are out here and I think we're going to at least. Yeah, I'm, I'm over here somewhere. I, I think we lost connection. But so Sarah, eight seconds. I'm very proud of her. Very impressed. Uh, last year, I think it was like three seconds for me. And she beat me making tacos. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't know what to um, here we have one of the favorites for me, at least growing up, was always the potato and egg. Um, sir, what's your name? Gabriel. Gabriel? Mm -hmm. How long have you been volunteering at Cowboy Breakfast? 13 years. All right, 13 years, so that means you've got it down. You oh, exactly yes. Exactly what to do. How do we make sure that those potato and egg tacos are the best tacos? They got onions in it. It yeah. makes it look good and it's soft. And then this is a special technique yeah. I saw you. That's what you feel because that's Chop them down. Let's see it. Chop, chop, chop. <laughs> awesome. And for you, how, so 13 years volunteering, why is it so worth it for year, year after year? Um, I just volunteer because for the kids, the scholarship for them, yeah. and help them out. Awesome. Well, thank and you so much. They're over here getting welcome. those ready. People are They're ready for the eggs. They're, yep. That's what they'll do. And when they bring the eggs, you just put them in the center, right? In the center. That's why I'm making the little hole there. I can do this too, you guys. I kind of... I'm, I've never been a cook. I've never been a fan of being in the kitchen, but there's some techniques for him to be really important. Um, but again, people are still in line. Hundreds, if not thousands of people out here this morning. Again, I can't get over Sarah just popping the game this morning, riding that pool and making those that was better than I can in the Back to you guys. Thank you, Alicia. Ooh, that looks good. Thank you so much. In Washington, the third and final day of opening statements for Democrats in the Senate impeachment trial of President Trump. The House manager spent nine and a half hours yesterday making their case that the president's actions violate the Constitution. ABC's Elizabeth Herr is on Capitol Hill with a look ahead and what we can expect from the president's legal team taking over tomorrow. Democrats preparing to wrap up their case arguing for removing President Trump from office. This conduct is not America first. It is Donald Trump first. The House managers accusing the president of abusing his power and obstructing Congress, alleging the president only started pushing Ukraine to launch investigations against Joe Biden when polls started showing the former VP as his biggest threat. No president has ever used his office to compel a foreign nation to help him cheat in our elections. And the actions of the president do not reach that level, no matter which school of thought you're on. The president's lawyers maintaining abuse of power is not a crime and therefore not an impeachable offense. Democrats countering that argument by playing this old video of one of the president's top allies, Senator Lindsey Graham, from the Clinton impeachment trial. It doesn't even have to be a crime. It's just when you start using your office and you're acting in a way that hurts people. You've committed a high crime. All 100 senators required to sit through these marathon sessions doing what they can to stay alert. Some using fidget spinners and stress balls, others even sketching. And lead House Prosecutor Adam Schiff closing this day with this, this impassioned plea for the Senate. If you find him guilty, you must find that he should be removed because right matters. Because right matters. And the truth matters. And tomorrow, the president's lawyers take over, and sources say they are concerned their arguments may get buried on a Saturday, so they could go for a shorter session tomorrow and leave the bulk of their arguments for next week. Elizabeth Hur, ABC News, Capitol Hill. 640, 43 degrees. Police are still tracking a cold case. It's a murder that happened two years ago today. Erica Hernandez will take a look at the case of David Benavides after the break. Six-year-old Daniel Benavides was found dead on the east side back on January 24, 2018. It's a crime that has left police with no leads and no suspect. Police are called out in the early morning hours to the 700 block of Runnels Avenue on the city's east side. People in the area had called police after hearing gunshots around 5.30 that morning. 
When police arrived, a man later identified as Benavides was found dead on a sidewalk from multiple gunshot wounds. Investigators searched the area looking for evidence or any possible witness, but very little was found. In October of that year, police again asking for information into this murder. With no leads, this case remains unsolved and her murderer remains on the loose. There is a $5,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest. You can call Crime Stoppers at 224-STOP. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Quarter to seven, Friday morning. Time once again to check on your roadways on this Friday. Hi, Nick. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Mark. And hello, everybody else. Uh, if you are heading to the Cowboy Breakfast this morning, you'll be surprised. You're going to have a smooth commute. Things are looking good. No accidents out there in the San Antonio area. And that accident on shirt in shirts, uh, that's cleared up as well. So good news, everyone there. Uh, good start to a Friday morning. Drive times. If you're on 1604 westbound from US 281, bless you, Mike, from I-10, seven minutes. And if you're on 281 southbound to Boulevard to 1604, seven minutes as well. Uh, let's take a look at some more drive times. Eastbound 1604 from US 281 to I-35, 10 minutes. And westbound 1604 from I-35 to US 81, 10 minutes as well. Those are good times there. All right, taking a look outside at the Trans Guide. 90 and Medeo Creek. That always gets pretty backed up. Expect a delay. That's right there, 90 and 410, right before 410. So expect a delay if you're going through 90. That's uh, That gets very backed up. You might want to go around even a little bit far, but maybe take Marbach then and, uh, and past 90. All right, here we go. 10 at Callahan, looking good. Uh, 10 in Frio, looking even better. And uh, 410 in Fredericksburg, traffic starting to pick up there as well near the medical center. I guess you could say that. Well, not necessarily, but uh, traffic's definitely starting to pick up around the city. So expect a delay if you're on the way to work. Thank you, Nick. Have you, thinking back to Sarah's live shot on the mechanical bull, have you ever ridden one of those mechanical bulls? I have. That is a lot harder than it looks. I was so sore the next day, it was ridiculous. But even just going around, like she's, oh, this is, no, it's really, really hard. It's hard. Yeah. So don't judge somebody if they fall off when it doesn't look like it's doing much. So we, we it, won't. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. it is. It is tough to do. So hey, take a look. I'm trying to figure out where this picture is, but um, it's gorgeous. Is that the San Antonio River, maybe? Or I don't know, but you're right. It is pretty. Yeah, it's so pretty. Thank you very much. Yeah, happy evening. Good evening. Uh, <laughs> it looks like that out there. And how about a good morning? Oh my goodness gracious, we are going to have another spectacular sunrise. Look at that nice orange glow as the sun is thinking about coming up. It's going to be another, oh, half an hour, a little bit more than that, 35 minutes until the sun peaks over the horizon. But yeah, it's just beautiful out there. It is chilly, though. I mean, we're down about a normal low temperature, though, for the 30-year average. Uh, 40 in Hondo, 38 Tarpley, 45 New Braunfels. Randolph right now is at 41 degrees. And there's a little bit of a breeze out there. Not much, but uh, just enough to shave a couple of notches off what it feels like. A lot of clear sky, obviously, as you saw in that uh, live cam. Clear skies. There's a hint of moisture aloft in the atmosphere, so maybe not as quite vivid a blue sky as yesterday, but that's kind of, as I say, splitting hairs. Now, humidity is very low as well this morning, and the dew points are down in the 40s. They are going to be staying on the comfortable side throughout the day, which is going to allow temperatures to warm up very quickly. So we'll gain about 25 degrees throughout the, the day today. Tomorrow, though, it's a different situation. The humidity is definitely going to come back up, not to where it's on the muggy side, but enough to where it's going to help out with. So the cloud cover throughout the day we will start off in the early morning hours with a little bit more in the way of clear skies and then clouds will be moving on in here and that's also going to help out with some showers. Although a lot of computer models are not overly aggressive with any um, with any rain around here. Now, as far as the current weather, we're on the back side of this big low that moved on through. This is what gave us the rain a couple of days ago. But tell you what, that is just causing a big old mess up there around the Great Lakes. If you have any travel plans going through a couple of hubs, say Chicago, Detroit, Cincinnati, definitely check ahead with that because it's just yuck out there up to the north. Now, as far as the next couple of days, Tomorrow, we are going to be seeing clouds come on in here. There is the chance for a few showers, mainly down along the coastal plain with a disturbance sliding up the coast. And they're going to be few and far between. Further inland, I really doubt if we see much, if anything, but just kind of worth a mention. It's going to be late tomorrow. Throughout most of the day, though, other than clouds, it's going to be a pretty decent day. 63 degrees today at noon, sunny skies to later on today, 68. 
beautiful out there and a little bit above normal tomorrow. More clouds again. A couple of showers are possible late mainly down to the southeast and that would be into the overnight hours. A few clouds starting off on Sunday, then we clear on out, get up to 70 on Sunday, uh, mid 60s, mid to upper 60s on Monday, Tuesday, another small chance of rain and another small chance of rain on Thursday. All right. Thank you, Mike. Right now it is 650, 43 degrees. Many of us have a bad habit we want to break, but most Americans just don't know how to do it. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we go over some tried and true ways to kick a bad habit. Outside with Live Cam, thanks so much for starting your day with us here on Good Morning San Antonio. Taking a live look downtown. The news you need to know before you go is next. Back to breaking news out of Houston where officials say broken windows, busted garage doors and plumes of smoke can be seen after a huge building explosion. It happened at Watson Grinding and Manufacturing northwest uh, of downtown Houston between 415 and 430 this morning. Reports say that one person was taken to the hospital. A reporter with our sister station, KPRC, talked to a person who lives in the area. They're describing it like a war zone. Yeah, look at your screen right now if you get a second. This is live from uh, Channel 2's uh, helicopter right now. Unbelievable scene there in northwest Houston. Not much left of that manufacturing facility. Major damage. Again, reports of one injury, but we're still gathering more information and crews are still on scene working on hot spots and putting out the remainder of what's up to that fire after an explosion that sent a fireball into the early morning sky over Houston. We'll keep tracking this story all morning and all day right here on KSAT. And we want to take Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa along with Alicia Barrera. We have been at the Cowboy Breakfast all morning long. Alicia, I drank coffee, saw the gravies made, made tacos. What are you even doing? Well, I've been uh, losing to you. I made tacos too, but not as fast as you. I didn't get to ride the bull, but I've been talking to a lot of people and I got to witness a proposal. It so, sounds like a good morning. All we have to do left is eat tacos. There's your taco. I think this one's yours. This one's the warm one. I've what did you holding, get? I th well, it's one of the ones that I rolled up, and it was the Rudy's Barbecue Taco. Oh, I got, and, pota I got potato and egg. Oh, man. And obviously, these are the tacos that people have been waiting in line for. They woke up super early. Just here, they got a new batch. We had that whole line waiting out there. So if you didn't make it, missing out, right? Well, sounds good. And just keep it here on KSAT.com where we're streaming live all morning long. Alicia and Sarah, thank you guys. Let's check on the roadways as we wind up this Friday broadcast. Yes, good morning, everyone. It's been a relatively slow morning today for accident wise. Just make sure you uh, if you are heading to work today, give yourself some extra time, especially if you're going towards the uh, northeast area. Looks like this stuff's kind of frozen here. Sorry about that. Here we go. All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. just give yourself some more ample time if you are leaving uh, today. And no problem as far as the weather is concerned. Gorgeous sunrise this morning. It's kind of chilly out there, though. 43 degrees in town, some 30s in parts of the hill country. Fantastic day. We are going to be up to 63 at noon, 68 for a high temperature. Uh, maybe a shower late tomorrow. I really wouldn't worry about it. And then beautiful on Sunday. All right, sounds good. Thanks for spending your Friday morning with us. Good luck, Spurs, tonight against the Phoenix Suns. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.